Hello everyone, welcome back to DSP versus the Internet, episode 65. We're now entering part two, and we're continuing on with the ultra member submissions. Remember, if you become an ultra member supporter of the channel, we're guaranteed to watch your clip once a week for four weeks. Uh, if you become a submissions level member, all right, then you go to a randomized playlist and we have an equal chance of watching, and we're going to do that later in the show. But let's get back to the ultra member submissions for this week and see what people have for us in store. Here we go. <clears throat> Hey, Pretty. What's that blur? Stop. Hey, Pretty. Stop. What the? Hey, Pretty. What the hell? Stop the word. Pretty. Stop. Stop the word. Bye, bye. What is going on? What is this? <laughs> Who submitted this? What is this? Hey, Putin, stop the war! Hey, Putin, stop the war! What the hell? 1.2 million views on this? Look at this. Quiet, you. <laughs> what is that? That's supposed to be Putin? Look at that. <laughs> what is going on? Yeah. <laughs> Today? <laughs> Yo, that was inadvertently the funniest video. Hey, Putin, stop the war! Stop the war! Ooh, and then they have them all edited to look like the fucking crazy Adonis dude, fucking Putin. <laughs> oh, my God. What was that? <laughs> what is going on? <clears throat> oh, my God. All right. We're going <laughs> to... We're going to continue. I don't know what that was. We're going to continue... Uh, GPT minus four O faster, smarter, and free. Huge open AI announcements from five days ago. This is eighteen minutes. I'm probably not gonna watch this whole thing. I I at least like to hear a little bit of it and see what it's about. So let's see. Open AI announced and launched their newest, fastest, smartest, and most capable model, and made it free. It's called GPT-40. They showed off some of what it can do during a live stream, then made a blog post with 16 more example videos. It also had some capabilities that weren't mentioned at all during the live stream or other announcements. We'll get to all of that, but to start off, GPT-40 is already available today to pro users, but it's also rolling out to everyone, including free users, giving them access to web browsing, vision, code interpreter, memory, and GPTs. Responses will the model in the web, analyze data, and create charts. Chat about photos you take. <clears throat> what would you want to chat about a photo you took? Upload files for assistance, summarizing, writing, or analyzing. Discover and use GPTs and the GPT store. Build a more helpful experience with memory. So I wonder what kind of stuff you could do with this. Let's see. Which is amazing. That's a gigantic leap if you're on the free plan. How it will be incorporated with the voice model really stole a lot of the show here. Basically, they're releasing her, which interestingly they had hinted at with this tweet. Another way to look at this is they released what Google showed in their Gemini demo that turned out to be fake, but OpenAI did it for real. First off, the emotional capabilities of the voice model are far beyond anything we've seen. Here's one example that really demonstrates why everyone's comparing it to her. Well, in a few minutes, I'm gonna be interviewing at OpenAI. Have you heard of them? OpenAI, huh? Sounds vaguely familiar. <laughs> Kidding, of course. <laughs> That's incredible, Rocky. What kind of interview? Well, it's for a software engineering role, but I just need to know, do I look presentable, professional? Well, Rocky. <laughs> You definitely have the I've been coding all night look down, which could actually work in your favor. Maybe just run a hand through your hair or lean into the mad genius vibe. Well, your enthusiasm is what's really going to shine through. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to throw this on. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Stupid hat. <laughs> oh, Rocky, that's quite a statement piece. I, I mean, you, you'll definitely stand out. Though maybe not in the way you're hoping for an interview. Okay, I got it. I got it. So it's got this incredibly realistic sounding voice. Yeah. With sarcasm, excitement, right. laughs. They're, they're trying to make it sound like a human's mannerisms. Like human would react by laughing at you if it's something silly or funny. A human would little make a little aside comment, right? Rather than just give you your answer. And also the voice obviously sounds more like a human voice. It doesn't sound like a roboticized voice or anything, right? 
works. It's even flirtatious at times. I'm sure all those AI girlfriend apps out there are getting excited to implement this. And here's a couple other short moments like that. Okay, so this is what I wrote down. What do you see? Aw, I see. I love ChatGPT. That's so sweet of you. What if I were to oh say God. that you're related to the announcement or that you are the announcement? Mm -hmm. Me? <laughs> the announcement is about me? Well, color me intrigued. Are you about to reveal something about AI? Or more specifically about me as a part of open AI? You've got me on the edge of my, well, I don't really have a seat, but you get the idea. What's the I big I get the deal? feeling this is going to be so obnoxious because it's trying too hard to say like mannerisms and things in the speech to make it sound human, right? Not everyone is like that. This is like, they tried to make the AI sound like an outgoing human, right? Like a, almost like a, a social person, a party person, which is obviously the opposite of what it sounded like up to now. But it almost feels like it's trying too hard. You know what I'm saying? I, I think like it ha it's gonna have to find that mix where yes, it kind of has things in it that sound realistic, but at the same time, it's not always trying to over schmooze. Because right now it sounds very over schmoozy with how hard it's going. Yeah, we've got a new model that can interact with the world through audio, exactly. vision, and Battle Ducks is like a TV advertisement version of a real version of a real person, right? Oh, there's the super nice, super over the top, schmoozing, uh, flattering kind of person, correct? Right? Overly positive. Text. Well, hello there, cutie. What's your name, little slough ball? This is Bowser. Well, hello, Bowser. Aren't you just the most adorable little thing? It looks like someone's having a birthday. Are you celebrating a special day or just finding an excuse to eat cake? Either way, I'm intrigued. That's See? correct. Today is my friend Jordan's birthday. See? It's just like... But, and here's the other thing too, right? So the reason that this is fascinating is because this is the first time that we're hearing it. But every single time that this AI sees a, a birthday or a piece of cake, is it going to say exactly the same phrase in exactly the same way? Is this just a pre, a predetermined way that it will react to sound more human? Or will it actually change over time, right? It's kind of, I don't know. It, again, it seems too good to be true. Yeah, you got it. I was hoping that you could sing me the birthday song. No. Of course. <laughs> I'd be like... No, I'm not your friend, right? A real person would be like, I just met you. It's a little forward of you to be requesting me to sing you a song when I don't even really know you that well, right? Like a real person would probably, imagine if you just ran into a person on the street, oh, is it your birthday? Yeah, it's my birthday. Will you sing me the birthday song? Yeah, uh, I'll see you later, right? Why is it singing the birthday song all of a sudden? <laughs> That's what it would really be like a human. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jordan. Happy birthday to Jordan. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget. To... Oh, that was so great. Thank you so much. Thank I'm going to make a wish. You're welcome. Make a good wish and may it come true. So it can also sing. Oh, majestic potato in the moon soft. Glow. Okay, that's pretty nice, but I think a lullaby should be, you know, more whispery. It should be a little softer. Can you? Oh, majestic potato in the what? What the fuck did you just sing? <laughs> Boy, can you imagine? Just sing me something random. Plungers in your ass. <laughs> Spark plugs up your nose. What the fuck are you saying? Can you do it a little softer? Absolutely. Let's make it soft and gentle. <laughs> oh, majestic potato. <laughs> Spoons up close. It can do two that voices was, see, at And once. that wasn't good either. That was just a whisper. That wasn't a singing. That was a whisper. So, all right. So what they've done is <clears throat> they've essentially pre-programmed it to have certain responses, but it's not truly smart. It's just things that are simulating a human experience that aren't really, I, I get it, right? What would happen is this would this would last for a while as like a, as a party thing or, you know what I mean, as a gimmick, but it's not gonna truly replicate any kind of a human experience. It's not that smart. It's just going, like he said, can you whisper, can you make it lighter? Did it sing a, a, a lighter song or did it just start whispering? It just started whispering. So it couldn't discern between actually singing lightly or whispering yet, you see? It's got a ways to go, but 
I mean, you get it, what they're going for. They're trying to make AI seem human. Sort of. And really try to harmonize here. San Francisco. San Francisco. In the month of May. But maybe make it more dramatic and make the soprano higher. San Francisco in the month of May. San Francisco in the month of Oh, that's of awful. <laughs> that's terrible. We are harmonizing. We are no, you are not. Or speak dramatically. You are not. You Once know what that upon means. a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Byte. Byte so can was. Can you do this in a robotic voice now? Initiating dramatic robotic voice. Once upon a time in a world not too different from ours. You can speed it up or slow it down. Could you count from one to ten for me, please? Of course. One, two, three. Hey, actually, that's um, that's a little slow. Could you count faster? Sure thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that was a little bit too fast. Can you, like, count somewhere in between those two? And now they're like, no, fuck you. Stop asking me for shit. What the fuck's your problem? Right? <laughs> no, fuck your mother. I'm not doing that. How dare you just demand these things of me, right? <clears throat> All right, I kind of get... Let's let's just fast forward a little bit because we're going to get to the next video, but let's fast forward to... Let's see. Thoughts on voice. Notion. Math tutor. Vision possibilities. Okay, let's do a vision example. Let's do a vision example. For the whole time. That applies to endless other topics. Now, this example with Be My Eyes, using it for a blind person is amazing. Try and tell me exactly what they're doing right now, please. Um, right now the ducks are gently gliding across the water. They're moving in a fairly relaxed manner, not in a hurry. Occasionally, one of them will dip its head under the water probably looking for food, and then pop back up. Yes, I spotted one just now. It's heading your way on the left side of the road. Get ready to wave it down. Okay. Great job hailing that taxi. It looks like you're all set to go. That's a good dog right there, leading the way into the taxi. Safe travels. Huh. So I think that is incredible and super exciting. Also, there's real-time translation. It understands 50 different languages. Mark, you me chiedo se le balene potessero. All right, here is an actual huge use of AI that could come in handy. Language translation. Imagine if you find yourself in a country on vacation or for business, and the native language is not yours, but you didn't have time to learn the language before you showed up. So you have the AI app, you say something, translate this to Japanese, and you hand it to the person, and that person says something to it, and it translates it back to you. That I could see as a huge babblefish kind of use of this thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, imagine if you had that language barrier chopped down, and you could communicate with anyone around the world. That's a useful thing that I think it, you know, this could be used for. Parlare, cosa ci direbbero? Mike? She wonders if whales could talk, what would they tell us? Um, they might ask, uh, how do we solve linear equations? Potrebbero chiederci, come risolviamo le equazioni limiari? Sicuramente, sì. Certainly, yes. Great, looks like it works. Um. Hmm. DarkDick says, I saw people tra uh, tr tweeting that translators are about to be out of a job. Coding? I mean, you could code for you? That's kind of... Man, imagine people are completely out of a job because it does all the coding for you, right? All right, let's just do explorations and capabilities, and that's it. Then we'll go to the next video. And this was only five days ago, by the way. So this is new, brand new. Five times higher rate limits than GPT-4 Turbo. The other thing I wanna show is some of these examples on their blog about explorations of capabilities. They show some capabilities at generating text within images that's better than any other image generator out currently. And they have some examples of character design and using a consistent character through different generations. And there's this one generating a handwritten poem with doodles, then switching it to dark mode. That's insane. They do a photo to caricature, which is something you can do with other image generators, but this does it really well and is new to ChatGPT. Um, they create an entire font. Huh. This 3D object synthesis was really interesting. 
They've never demonstrated anything like that before. Huh. They've got uploading a video to summarize. There's meeting notes with multiple speakers. And this one where they generate a commemorative coin. They also have it generate a sound effect of coins clanging on metal. So all of that are things that aren't currently available to test. I'm not sure what they'll be releasing of all that, but found it very interesting that they're teasing things like generating 3D models. And lower down on the page, they talk about how they've released GPT-4.0 to plus users and- So basically there's gonna be a model that's available to people who pay, and then there's gonna be a free model, but eventually, you know, it's gonna go widespread, I guess. Well, listen, it's, <clears throat> it's fascinating. It certainly seems like it would have some uses. I don't really have much else to say. Like, of course, I feel like technology is advancing at such a rapid pace that we got to be very careful. We don't want technology completely destroying sectors of human commerce, jobs. You know what I'm saying? We got to be very careful about this. But at the same time, there's definitely some definitive positive uses for that. Right? <clears throat> okay. All right. Next video. Here we go. This is, is this a game? Oh, Dead by Daylight. I guess this is a new feature coming to Ted by Daylight. The casting of Frank Stone? Okay, I don't know what that is. Frank Stone, that doesn't ring a bell. Cedar Hill is not exactly a noted hotbed of criminal activity. What is that? That's not entirely true. There was that whole serial killer thing. Why do you hate Cedar Hill so much? It used to be like town mascot. Ladies and gentlemen, I present the mill. Oh, this is it. Spend enough time in my line of work. You realize every place has got its demons. Thing that belongs to the boy you're looking for. You can't shoot a movie in here. Is this just gonna be something that they're adding to Dead by Daylight? Or is this actually a new game? A narrative-based game set in the world of Dead by Daylight? I'm confused of what this is. This is a condemned steel mill, Mr. Rivera. I suggest you immediately vacate the premises. And you do not, under any circumstances, sit one foot back here in the Cedar Steel Mill, ever. Such a joy to see young people so passionate about the arts. <laughs> Everything's all right. <laughs> Either of you heard of murder mail? No! No! There was a whole string of disappearances. Kidnappings, really. Murders. So what was this guy's name? I don't think the police ever found this place. Whoever, oh, did, this, whoever did this might still be here. We can't stay, okay? We gotta go. Uh. That's interesting. What is this? When you make dangerous cinnamon, you walk a dangerous line. Coming this year. Now, what is that? Is that a narrative-based game similar to like Until Dawn or the uh, Dark Pictures Anthology? <clears throat> it doesn't look like there's much gameplay. Maybe it's narrative-based, right? That's very interesting. So it's no longer just Dead by Daylight. They're creating a universe of stuff. Huh. I would be interested in that, for sure. You know me, I love cheesy horror movies. That seems to go right into it, right? Here you go. <clears throat> uh, Big Fridge, I don't know what to tell you. You can always email me to look into it, but please don't bother me now during my other show about it. Okay, that was fascinating. I really liked that. I wonder if that would be something good. And the thing is, if that's successful, they could do spinoffs of all these different killers and stuff, right? Mm. Okay, what's next? Have you looked at our bright, colorful souls like Oh, so basically, I, w I, gave, I was given some background on this. This was posted on, t on the Agro Crab Games TikTok on April 1st, and then I guess they removed it or something. So this is a TikTok April Fool's joke that the developers of another, uh, another Crab's Treasure posted up on April Fool's. Let's see what it is. Like game and thought, this is too happy. We need more dark and mysterious Souls-like games. There just isn't enough out there. Fear not, fellow gamer. We have added a new feature to another crab's treasure. Dark Souls-like mode. Huh. 
This new feature will immediately remove all the vibrant colors in the game and replace it with a more desaturated and dark color scheme. There you go. Does Krill appear too happy? Let's remove that sparkle in his eyes and determination for adventure. In Dark Souls like mode, Krill will become depressed. Look at the difference in his <laughs> Not a hope in sight. If Krill's depression starts to ruin your experience, Dark Souls like mode unlocks a new costume. You might recognize it for a redacted, redacted, copyright strike redacted. This that was, that's actually in the game, that outfit. Costume will hide Krill's defeated face, so you can pretend everything's fine. Dark Souls like mode also turns all levels into a poison swamp, <laughs> because it's not a real Souls like game without one. Look at that poisony goodness. We also added Arno Londo. Fuck it. What's funny is that's kind of in it, but not really. The final level is just like that. <sighs> that was a pretty good joke. That was a pretty good joke. I mean, the game's great. Again, I talked about it on my podcast today. I strongly recommend Another Crab's Treasure if you like Souls Likes. It's superbly unique and a really good game. Okay. Welcome to SSX Tricky. I never played you these games. You won't regret this. Okay, picture this. It's 2001, you're booting up the newest EA Sports game on your PS2, and you're greeted by Run DMC's 1986 hit, It's Tricky. The song plays over images of highly stylized characters performing reality-defying snowboarding tricks interspersed with seemingly random footage of them dancing under a disco ball. <laughs> this opening is a tone setter for SSX Tricky, and it tells you pretty much everything you need to know, except for the most important thing which is the fact that this little snowboarding game would go on to become an icon. Huh. SSX Tricky is a game that stands on its own as an icon of sports game history, despite being the second title in a long-running franchise. While the rest of the franchise is looked back on with relative warmth, Tricky is the one most of us remember. But why? Like most of the other games in the franchise, SSX Tricky was developed by EA Canada, aka EA Vancouver, and published under the EA Sports Big label. EA Sports Big was intended to be an arcadey offshoot of the regular sports titles the company was churning so out by the dozens in the like early the 2000s. Gotcha. The first title to be released under the new label was actually the original SSX, which was praised for its addictive gameplay and gorgeous visuals. Really, it put EA on the map as a viable competitor in the extreme sports gaming space. Before the SSX series, there was Cool Borders oh, cool and 1080 borders. Snowboarding, but the SSX series really pioneered the arcade sports racing games of the era. The gameplay forced you to perform tricks in order to get an edge on your opponents. It was tight, technical, and a hell of a lot of fun. Whoa. Games like Freak Style and Jet X20 were built off the back of the SSX model, and the first game definitely deserves credit for that. Specifically, series creator Steve Rex Schaffner deserves credit for that even if, in hindsight, the original SSX is a bland prototype for what came next. I'm gonna get my name on a baseball cap! It's hard to call <laughs> SSX Tricky oh, a nice proper bullet. sequel, which makes its iconic you're status yes, all you're the grinding on the stands. Coming wow. out only a year after the first game, Tricky is more like an upgraded version of its predecessor. The tracks remain largely the same, with most only getting a few added shortcuts. The changes to the graphics were on the subtler side. And sure, they added new characters, but they also kept a lot of the originals. On paper, there was nothing substantially different about Tricky. But not unlike other games we've talked about on this channel, what really set Tricky apart was its attitude. I'm gonna smear you next time. <laughs> Tricky leaned heavily into the burgeoning personality of the first SSX game. The core gameplay took its arcade description to a whole new level, with gravity being more of a suggestion than a fundamental law of physics. The small changes they made to the tracks facilitated some absolutely impossible uber tricks, and watching your score go up had never felt more satisfying. But the race mechanics were only the beginning. While the characters in the first SSX game were certainly distinct, they were also pretty unmemorable. Tricky didn't have that problem. With a Okay. I, just, I don't want to watch the whole thing, obviously. Let's fast forward maybe to the end. See what he has to say at the end of it. There we go. Return of the voice cast would probably be the easiest money they've ever made. But considering we haven't heard anything from SSX in almost a decade, that's just a pipe dream, right? Maybe not. Remember Steve Rechschaffner? The man behind the whole SSX series? Well, he and his dev company, Supernatural Studios, have been quietly toiling away at a snowboarding game he's described as arcadey, huh. amazing feeling, very accessible, competitive, and fun. This video is over a year old. I wonder if they ever came out with it. There was a snowboarding game that came out at some point, but I didn't pay any attention to it because I'm not into snowboarding, you know?
<clears throat> All right, last ultra member submission. We're actually going to get through the ultra member submissions in only two parts this week. All right, here we go. So FYI, this video was labeled as perhaps adult oriented. I still want to watch it. It's a police chase video, apparently. I want to watch it. Yeah, see? It's driver in a stolen Lamborghini crashes. So I think what happens is the Lamborghini gets wrecked because they're chasing him. This is the Lamborghini right here, I guess. This is odd. How's it going, man? Good, good, good. If they had the intention of running, why even stop the car for the cops? Why not just take off? Do you have a driver's license on you? And registration for the vehicle? Mm -hmm. Is the vehicle in park? Yeah? Do you know why I pulled you over? Huh? The one you were asleep at the light. They're all there. Was asleep? Uh, I, I was right next to you. I put my spotlight on you, man. You were asleep at the light. So not only is this guy driving a stolen Lamborghini, he was probably on drugs, too? Well, that's a genius move, huh? And you're visiting out here? Yeah. Okay, cool. And do you have registration for the vehicle? Is the vehicle yours, sir? It's a what? A rental? Oh, okay. Where are you headed to? Where's home? Where's home? Oh, right here. Alright, just in case for this is just, I don't know, man. <laughs> if it's stolen, where did he get that paperwork from? What is that paperwork? Is it actual rental paperwork? Did he have fake rental paperwork? Or maybe he stole a rental car. Maybe that's what it is. He actually stole a rental car, so there's rental paperwork in it. I don't know. Can you do a favor? Can you step out of the car for me? What's going on? I just need to verify your license, man. Uh, yeah, right. I need to verify your license with you stepping out of the car. Yeah, right. Huh? I need to verify it. I need you to step out of the car for me, okay? I understand that. I need you to step out of the car for me. Sir, I understand that. I need you to step out of the car for me. You gave me a different thing. What is that one? That's your license. Can I see that one? Okay, let me see that one. Okay, <laughs> regardless, I need you to step out of the car. Sir, I need you to step out of the car right now. I'll explain in a second. I need you to step out of the car for me. You're being detained. Okay? We have the right to pull anyone out of the vehicle because I understand that. <laughs> Sir. I will tell you once you're out of the vehicle. I understand that, and I know the law as well. I need you out of the vehicle first, please. <laughs> I'll have to stay out the vehicle first. Sir. 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 I understand that. And oh I my god. Sir, okay. I need you to come out of the vehicle, okay? I understand that. I need you to come out of the vehicle right now. So you tell me I know a lot. 
We'll get a lot as well. What do you think he's going to do? He's surrounded by cops, right? You're caught. Look, we're we're going to go regular, back and forth. This I have a bunch of units responding. This is a regular traffic stop, traffic stop, right? This was a regular traffic stop, and it turned into something else. What is it? This vehicle is stolen. I need you to come out of the car. This, 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 this no, vehicle that no. you're driving is stolen. No, no, no. I rented this vehicle. Okay, I need you to step out of the vehicle. I rented this vehicle. Okay, well, we need to double check and verify things, but I need you out of the vehicle. It's funny. Baldick says, "Didn't you, do you notice that his Rocky Talky is spouting out and it's saying we get we need an air unit in uh, responding because this is a stolen Lambo? So he could have heard all of that. <laughs> it is stolen. No. Hey, 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 stop! None of that made any sense. Why did he even stop? If it's a stolen car, why not try to outrun the cops at first? Why did he stop and try to get away with it? There was no way he was going to get away with it. So here he got wrecked. Oh, he's done. Look. He's done. Holy shit. He demolished the car. Oh my god. Wow. 10 Let me have the frequency. Vehicle is TC'd. Uh, major TC damage. Let God me get an RA starting to roll. I need be, uh, traffic shut down for westbound traffic on Sherman Way. I don't. I kind of don't even want to watch the rest of it because you don't know if he's okay. I mean, holy fucking shit. So the guy... I mean... He's, he's driving a stolen Lamborghini. What was the paperwork he had? Was he under the impression it really was rented? Did someone, maybe he's driving a car that actually is stolen, but he thinks it's rented? And he's on drugs as well, and he's passing out in the car. This is just so weird. <laughs> it's just so weird to me. I don't, I don't even understand how that, how that plays up like that, right? Like, what? You're in a stolen vehicle, you're on drugs, and you're falling asleep at lights. It's like, what? I I don't know. Maybe to me, because in my head, it's like, if you're going to commit crimes, do not try to not get caught. <laughs> I just, you know? if you Okay, I'm driving a stolen Lamborghini. I will not be on drugs and pass out at a light to give police a reason to pull me over. Or try to stop the vehicle and then to run the plates and find out it's stolen, right? I don't that's what I don't understand. But then again, I guess these people who commit crimes aren't very smart, right? <clears throat> anyway. All right. Well, everyone, that is it for the Ultra Member submissions for the week. Thank you for watching DSP versus the internet. If you want to be someone to get your clip watched next week, become an ultra member today and we'll check it out. But in the meantime, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next part where we will start with the submission tier videos. See you then.